This week we are putting a 24 volt Victron solar system with EG4 uh, server rack batteries all running at 24 volts. So it's a little bit different and if you like that stick around and uh, see if see see if it gets, it gets complete. I don't know. In our main compartment here, uh, I already got the old batteries removed and I think we're going to put the EG4 batteries right down here all on a row like on a little platform and that way the customers will still have most of this storage space available and i think that's gonna be pretty cool of course we're gonna put everything else up on the board in the back there haven't got that sorted out just yet haven't done a whole lot in here and other than just figuring out what my paths are and look at all this room in here i mean honestly i'm tempted i'm like oh we could actually fit a lot in there, but we're not gonna be taking a lot of space up on the back side of this wall either. But I get it why some of the other installers, like I wanna say the dry campers, uh, shout out to you guys, love the work you do. Um, they do a lot of work right in here and it totally makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, it's just a lot of wasted storage space in here. But yeah, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna run AC and data lines over here. I've already started work on the battery containment system, we'll call it, in the shop garage there. Let's go take a look. So this is what I've been hard at work at. We got three 24 volt EG4 batteries. We're wiring them up in parallel. And this is what I'm thinking. This is three quarter inch uh, ECX plywood from the local home improvement store. In the Midwest, it's mostly Menards. If you know, then you know. Um, plan on uh, carpeting all this to make it look nice. And then this is going to be the top that goes over it. And this is going to overhang a little bit on both sides because then, um, you know, nothing. You got the full storage space. And if you need to, if you need to get in here, you still can. I did have a little trepidation about exactly how we're going to wire these up because these terminals are not very big it is definitely one of my one of my things i don't like about the eg4s especially when they start making them lower volts 48 volts i get it um but when you get these lower voltages a little bit i mean 24 25 volts isn't necessarily low but 12 for sure uh just these terminals are not very big so i have number two wire on here and the reason why I feel comfortable doing that uh, is each of these are breakered at 100 amps. So that means we can only ever have, or we can't have more than 100 amps flowing from each cable. Now, hypothetically, if there was a dead short, you could have 200 amps coming through to, let's say, a short right here. But I don't really see that happening. And if it was a full-on dead short, uh, these would pop in short order as well. Uh, I will be fusing the entire bank separately as well, but I just wanted to talk about that real quick, uh, how I'm sizing the wires for this, because I am a little bit limited on my lug size here. I plan on doing two watt out of here and I have to shave those down a little bit. And so the way I have these locked in here is I just cut little strips of plywood, put that in front, and then I got same kind of thing going on the back side here. So it's locked in there. And then this is gonna, of course, lock it down in front. I'm gonna attach a couple of pieces of wood or maybe some foam, something to kind of compress this down a little bit. So when I screw this board down to here, it'll just squish all the batteries in. So pretty much they can't go anywhere. And then of course, this is gonna be screwed down to that bay out there. But uh, so that's the plan there. I'll keep you updated on how this goes. All right, we got some, uh, this indoor outdoor carpet that we like to put on everything. Got this on the battery box. Uh, this is gonna get screwed down, so you won't really see anything there, but this is all gonna be in that front compartment here. All that stuff in there will be nice and protected. Customers can put anything they want on top. Uh, I'm just gonna pre-drill, preset my screws on there, and then I'm gonna Pretty much be able to move this into the uh into the old grand design there all right got it on there how about that huh 
it's not obviously screwed down or anything, but uh, it's just sitting there. I think that's gonna look pretty cool. You can have access to all your batteries and then pretty much have all the storage space. Uh, this, uh, I think is gonna be pretty sweet. I mean, hypothetically, if you got crazy, you could even do a double stack on this and probably still have room for everything. But next, we gotta get that working on that board back there. All right, we're getting to the end of another day working on this Grand Design Solitude here. And uh, let's see where we're at. We got the board inside and mounted. As you can see, we got the batteries in there. And we actually have those flipped on. I was hoping to get them charging here soon. And then this is what we got going on here. Two inverters. 24 volts. It's going to be fun. Got to uh, get a little close up of oh, how we got everything set up in here. Got the uh, using a little extra input output, whatever you want to call it on the links, just using protector there. Uh, this right here is actually just a placeholder for a 12 to 24 volt charger that's coming shortly. But, um, you know, if they wanted to, there is plenty of room here to add another charger and then just pop in the raceway. Although, no, never mind, we're out of. Well, you could do another one, do another little breaker off of this. Anyway, we got uh, Serbo and all his friends over there. Got uh, all of our data lines ready to go here. We got our solar breaker hooked up. We're gonna punch through a hole right here. Uh, but I'm waiting until I get my AC lines run here. So, and uh, we're gonna be hooking this up in uh, the two by 120 in parallel. That's the way I like to do these. That way you don't have to worry about balancing your loads and it'll run both air conditioners just fine. Uh, you just can't run any 240 volt appliances, which most people don't. So yeah, we'll come out of here somewhere over and then uh, just right inside. Actually, I, I haven't even opened up the front door in this rig yet. Uh, I also got solar panels on top. So we've got uh, 12, count them, 12 panels up here. They're not secured down yet. I like to just place and figure out how many can fit before I get in too much trouble. And on this one, we're actually going over the, the solar pre-wire mount between the standoff and the cavity underneath here, I think we're good. So that's gonna, that's what's letting us run the four panels here, which is really allowing us to do this. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting this going, all wired up. Tomorrow's probably gonna be the big day of turning it all on. I plan on wiring this tonight. Actually, we're almost in shade now, but I just wanted to get a little cooler. When I work on these projects, I like to I pretty much do like 12 hour days. Uh, so yeah, work, uh, work as much as I can, get them done as fast as I can, but I try and use all parts of the day. Uh, do the morning, obviously in the evenings, take advantage of the cooler temperatures if I can. It's actually not horrible. It's, uh, I think it's high seventies right now, which I shouldn't be complaining. So anyway, I think we're gonna grab some dinner and then we'll check in tonight, see where we're at before we close out at least this part of the video. And I also wanna mention, thank you to everyone that continues to watch, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. Uh, subscriptions help, we're trying to grow the channel, trying to help more people. Uh, if there's things you wanna see more of, leave a comment down below. I love hearing from you, so. Uh, all right, I gotta get back at it. Well, I let the uh, sun go down a little bit so we could work up here and not quite so much heat, but got everything done, we got all 12 panels, 200 and, or 2,000 and 400 watts. And uh, we saw about 1,600, almost 1,700 today. I don't know if you can tell, there's definitely a haze in the sky from the wildfires. That's just the reality of things right now. And that turned out, I figured that's about 70% output. That's about what you can expect, to be honest. So. Uh, as far as the wiring goes, we did uh, 3S, 4P, 
going all down just the original solar pre-wire. We, uh, with that configuration, we're running at about 120, 130 volts, and that translates into about 10, 12 amps, I believe, by the time it gets to the controller, which is plenty healthy for 10 gauge wire. So, uh, I think that's about everything here. I'm gonna get this stuff down and call her a night. All right, last day, for sure, for real. Just uh, taking my time, wrapping this up, making sure everything is just the way it needs to be. So let's uh, take a look at uh, where we're at here. Got our batteries there, of course. Uh, everything is hooked up here on the multipluses. Got to get the covers on and, uh, oh, I just noticed uh, I need to get a temp sensor in there because I do like to keep an eye on the temperature of the batteries. Uh, let's take a look in here. Now you probably noticed that fan kind of uh, haphazardly wedged in there. I'm doing a little ad hoc experiment to see uh, if that solar charger is being derated at all because we do have 2400 watts of solar on there and as best I can tell it is currently not derating. The output is not changed based on the temperature so I think we're within spec still. Uh, that's something I'm going to continue to monitor and maybe even do some more experiments on. Anyway, got everything else kind of sorted out here. Of course, got the lights in there. I think we've seen that before. Everything hooked up here. Got the trailer charging hooked up. Got my AC mains coming out here and out there. Ran those just up through there. Give you a quick peek about how so it goes up there and then back into this utility area and it pops right out into the box pretty easy then uh yeah you can get to this back behind here pretty darn easily oh uh, we got this going here a uh, little tricky thing we're gonna have to take care of in this and this is actually what i'm gonna do next but i figured i wanted to update everyone on where we're at uh so yeah, there's not a false back on this, so I didn't have to drill my, uh, use my hole saw out through here. And I made a mistake. Well, I won't call it a mistake, just an oopsie. Got, uh, had a little blow out there. But then I got to thinking, I have some spare material like this that we've taken out of other grand designs. And I think it even matches this other color too, so I can pick. But I think I'm gonna cut a piece to go right in here and cover this out and make it a false false back so we can cover all that up. And of course we vacuum all this stuff out, but just wanted to show where, where we're at there. Uh, to get the data line for the display, I did have to cut a hole down in here. Um, just a, a small hole saw from this wall to inside this cavity. That was it. There are wires that go all the way up around in there, but the path was just too, too uh, tricky. So we just did that. But other than that, everything's working good. Uh, the slides all operate off of that 70 amp controller. So, or that 70 amp uh, step down converter. So I don't see any reason why we got to do anything extra there. So uh, I'm gonna get at fixing that up and then uh, we're about ready to send this home. All right, and after some work, the reveal. Not perfect, but you know what? Looks better than it did. Uh, had I known, if I do one of these again, I, I think I can make that hole a little bit smaller or maybe do like a slit in it and then wedge the cable through it and then so it's not quite such an eyesore. I'm not really sure what to cover that with. Maybe I can order some of the tape that Grand Design has that's the same color. But uh, yeah. Oh well, you live and you learn. Hopefully the customer appreciates this. That looks, looks a lot better than it used to. So yeah. And let's take uh, one last look. Let's get the light to turn on. Is it on? Yeah. One last look in this compartment here, all buttoned up. 
The only thing I got left to do, I think, is put on the stickers, or a sticker. Uh, really proud of this one. Uh, once again, everyone is our best one. I love this shelf for storage. I think when it comes to big systems with multiple inverters, and even if you want to consider running an air conditioner for more than, I would say, a half hour to an hour, 24 volts is the way to go, 100%, and using these life power batteries in this configuration, I think this is way better than a stacked rack because look at all this, you get this storage space out of it. And you even got a little bit of room there. I just love this. Uh, if I was to build my bus again, I think I might do these. So anyway, uh, any comments, questions on this 24 volt system? Uh, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Email us, text me, whatever, I don't care. I'll try and get back to you when I can. We are busy, but uh, if you're patient, I will get back to you. So from all of us here, uh, thank you. And uh, if you need solar on anything you got, RVs, buses, I'm trying to think of different things, golf cart, wagon, lemonade stand, whatever, we'll help you out. Uh, thanks for watching. Catch you guys next time.